Srauta is a Sanskrit word that means belonging to Sruti, that is, anything based on the Vedas of Hinduism. It is an adjective and prefix for texts, ceremonies or person associated with Sruti. The term, for example, refers to Brahmins who specialize in the Sruti corpus of texts, and Srauta Brahmin traditions in modern times have been reported from coastal Andhra. Topic. Etymology and meaning The Sanskrit word srauta is rooted in sruti that which is heard, referring to scriptures of Hinduism. Srauta, states Johnson, is an adjective that is applied to a text, ritual practice or person, when related to sruti. Klostermeyer states that the prefix means, belonging to sruti, and includes ceremonies and texts related to sruti. The word is sometimes spelled shrauta in scholarly literature. Topic: History. Spread via Indian religions, Homa traditions are found all across Asia, from Samarkand to Japan, over a 3,000-year history. A Homa, in all its Asian variations, is a ceremonial ritual that offers food to fire and is ultimately descended from the Vedic religion. The tradition reflects a ritual eclecticism for fire and cooked food that developed in Indian religions, and the Brahmana layers of the Vedas are the earliest surviving records of this. Yajna or Vedic fire sacrifice ritual, in Indian context, became a distinct feature of the early Sruti Vedic rituals. A srauta ritual is a form of quid pro quo where through the fire ritual, a sacrificer offered something to the gods, and the sacrificer expected something in return. The Vedic ritual consisted of sacrificial offerings of something edible or drinkable, such as milk, clarified butter, yogurt, rice, barley, an animal, or anything of value, offered to the gods with the assistance of fire priests. This Vedic tradition split into Srauta Shruti based and Smarta Smriti based. .The Srauta rituals, states Michael Witzel, are an active area of study and are incompletely understood. Srauta fire ritual practices were copied by different Buddhist and Jain traditions, states Phyllis Granoff, with their texts appropriating the ritual eclecticism of Hindu traditions, albeit with variations that evolved through the medieval times. The Homa-style Vedic sacrifice ritual, states Musashi Tachikawa, was absorbed into Mahayana Buddhism and Homa rituals continue to be performed in some Buddhist traditions in Tibet, China and Japan. <laughs> Topic. Texts Sraudasutras are ritual-related sutras based on the Sruti. The first versions of the Kalpa Vedanga sutras were probably composed by the 6th century BCE, starting about the same time as the Brahmana layer of the Vedas were composed and most ritual sutras were complete by around 300 BCE. They were attributed to famous Vedic sages in the Hindu tradition. These texts are written aphoristic sutras style, and therefore are taxonomies or terse guidebooks rather than detailed manuals or handbooks for any ceremony. The Sraudasutras differ from the Smartasutra based on Smrta that which is remembered, traditions. The Smartasutras, in ancient Vedic and post-Vedic literature, typically refer to the Gryasutras householder's rites of passage and Samayakarika Sutras right way to live one's life with duties to self and to relationships with others, Dharmasastras. Srauta Sutras The Srauta Sutras form a part of the corpus of Sanskrit sutra literature. Their topics include instructions relating to the use of the Sruti corpus in great rituals and the correct performance of these major Vedic ceremonies, are same as those found in the Brahmana layers of the Vedas, but presented in more systematic and detailed manner. Definition of a Vedic sacrifice Apastamba Yajna Parabhasa Sutras 1.1, Translator, M. Davamani Badayana Sraudasutra is probably the oldest text in the Sraudasutra genre, and includes in its appendix a Parabhasa Sutra definitions, glossary section. Other texts such as the early Apastamba Sraudasutra and later composed Katyayana start with Parabhasa Sutra section. 
The Sulbasutras or Sulvasutras are appendices in the Sraudasutras and deal with the mathematical methodology to construct geometries for the Vedi Vedic altar. The Sanskrit word Sulba means cord, and these texts are rules of the cord. They provide, states Kim Plofker, what in modern mathematical terminology would be called area preserving transformations of plane figures. Tersely describing geometric formulae and constants. Five Sulbasutras have survived through history, of which the oldest surviving is likely the Bhadhyana Sulbasutra, 800 to 500 BCE, while the one by Katyayana may be chronologically the youngest, approximately equals 300 BCE. Topic: <laughs> Rituals. Srauta rituals and ceremonies refer to those found in the Brahmana layers of the Vedas. These include rituals related to fire, full moon, new moon, soma, animal sacrifice, as well as seasonal offerings made during Vedic times. These rituals and ceremonies in the Brahmana's texts are mixed and difficult to follow. A clearer description of the ritual procedures appeared in the Vedanga Kalpa Sutras. The Vedic rituals, states Bird, can be divided into Srauta and Griya rituals. Srauta rites relating to public ceremonies were relegated to the Sraudasutras, while most Vedic rituals relating to rites of passage and household ceremonies were incorporated in the Sutras, literally, homely, also called Laukika or popular, states Lubin. However, the Sutras also added many new non srauta ceremonies over time. The Sraudasutras generally focus on large expensive public ceremonies, while Gryasutras focus on householders and samskaras rites of passage such as childbirth, marriage, renunciation and cremation. The Sraudasutra ceremonies are usually elaborate and require the services of multiple priests, while Gryasutra rituals can be performed without or with the assistance of a priest in the Hindu traditions. Topic Animal versus vegetarian sacrificial offerings The Srauta rituals varied in complexity. The first step of a Srauta ritual was making of an altar, then the initiation of fire, next of Havir Yajna's recitations, then offering of milk or drinkable liquid drops into the fire, then prayers all with mantras. More complex Srauta rituals were based on moon cycle and the seasonal rituals. The lunar cycle Srauta sacrifices had no animal sacrifices, offered a purodasha baked grain cake and ghee clarified butter as an offering to gods, with recitation of mantras, according to Witzel. The pasabanda or animal sacrifice is also integrated into the soma ritual, and involves the killing of an animal. The killing was considered inauspicious, and bloodless. Suffocation of the animal outside the offering grounds was practiced. The killing was viewed as a form of evil and pollution Papa, Aga, Enos, and reforms were introduced to avoid this evil in late post-Rigvedic times. According to Timothy Lubin, the substitution of animal sacrifice in Srauta ritual with shaped dough or pots of ghee has been practiced for at least 600 years. Although such a substitution is not condoned in Srauta ritual texts, the discussions about substituting animal sacrifice with vegetarian offering, states Usha Grover, appear in section 1.2.3 of the Shatapatha Brahmana of the Yajurveda. This section, states Grover, presents the progressive change in the material offered to gods during a Srauta ritual. The change, adds Grover, may be related to ahimsa non-violence principle, or merely a means to preserve the number of cattle, or lack of availability of sacrificial animals. However, according to Grover, the ancient text suggests that animal sacrifice was given up. An offering had become vegetable, grains, milk and ghee. The view that ancient Vedic texts had begun asserting that vegetable offerings were as efficient as animal offerings, for certain sacrifices, is shared by Max Muller and others. <laughs> <laughs> Decline According to Alexis Sanderson, Srauta ceremonies declined from the 5th to the 13th century CE. 
This period saw a shift from Shrauta sacrifices to charitable grant of gifts such as giving cows, land, issuing endowments to build temples and satrani feeding houses, and water tanks as part of religious ceremonies. Topic. Contemporary practices Most Shrauta rituals are not performed in the modern era, and those that are, are rare. Some Shrauta traditions have been observed and studied by scholars, as in the rural parts of Andhra Pradesh, and elsewhere in India and Nepal. Shrauta traditions from coastal Andhra have been reported by David Knipe, and an elaborate Shrauta ceremony was video recorded in Kerala by Fritz Stahl in 1975. According to Axel Michaels, the Homa sacrifice rituals found in modern Hindu and Buddhist contexts evolved as a simpler version of the Vedic Shrauta ritual. Knipe has published a book on Shrauta practices from rural Andhra. The Shrauta ritual system, states Knipe, is an extended one, in the sense that a simple domestic routine has been replaced by one far more demanding on the religious energies of the sacrificer and his wife and is initiated by augmenting a family's single-fire griya system to a three-fire shrauta system. The community that continues to teach the shrauta tradition to the next generation also teaches the smarta tradition, the choice left to the youth. The Andhra tradition may be, states Nipe, rooted in the ancient Apstamba shrauta and griya sutras. In the Andhra traditions, after one has established the routine of the twice-daily routine of Agnihotra offerings and bi-weekly Dara Purnamasa offerings, one is eligible to perform the Agnistoma, the simplest Soma rite. After the Agnistoma, one is eligible to perform more extensive Soma rites and Agnikayana rites. Shrauta Brahmins specialize in conducting rituals according to the Shruti corpus of texts, in contrast to Smarta Brahmins, known for conducting rituals according to Smriti texts. Women reciting mantras at Shrauta ceremonies of Hinduism from ancient times have been suggested by a number of scholars such as Mary McGee, Stephanie Jameson, Catherine Young, and Laurie Patton. Topic. Defunct practices The Ashvada and Rajasua are not practiced anymore. There is doubt the Purushamedha, a human sacrifice, was ever performed. Topic. Influence The Shrauta rituals were complex and expensive, states Robert Bella, and we should not forget that the rites were created for royalty and nobility. A Brahmin, adds Bella, would need to be very rich to sponsor and incur the expense of an elaborate Shrauta rite. In ancient times, through the middle of 1st millennium CE, events such as royal consecration sponsored the Shrauta rites, and thereafter they declined as alternative rites such as temple and philanthropic actions became more popular with the royalty. The Upanishads, states Brian Smith, were a movement towards the demise of the Shrauta style social rituals and the worldview these rites represented. The Upanishadic doctrines were not a culmination, but a destruction of Vedic ritualism. This had a lasting influence on the Indian religions that gained prominence in the first millennium BCE, not only in terms of the Vedanta and other schools of Hindu philosophy that emerged, but also in terms of Buddhist and Jaina influence among the royal class of the ancient Indian society. In the Upanishads, one might be witnessing the conclusion of Vedism, not in the sense of its culmination but in the sense of its destruction. In the proto-Vedantic view, the universe and ritual order based on resemblance has collapsed, and a very different configuration based on identity has emerged. Upanishadic monism, one might say, blew the lid off a system contained, as well as regulated, by hierarchical resemblance. The formulation of a monistic philosophy of ultimate identity, arguably one indication of Vedism dissipating and reforming into a new systematic vision of the world and its fundamental principles, was born outside the normative classification schema of Vedic social life and became institutionalized as a counterpoint to life in the world. With time, scholars of ancient India composed Upanishads, such as the Prananihotra Upanishad, that evolved the focus from external rituals to self-knowledge and to inner rituals within man. 
The Prananihotra is, states Henk Bodowitz, an internalized direct private ritual that substituted external public Agnihotra ritual a Shrauta rite. This evolution hinged on the Vedic idea of devas gods referring to the sense organs within one's body, and that the human body is the temple of Brahman, the metaphysical unchanging reality. This principle is found in many Upanishads, including the Prananihotra Upanishad, the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad section 2.2, Kashataki Upanishad sections 1.4 and 2.1–2.5, Prasna Upanishad chapter 2, and others. The idea is also found and developed by other minor Upanishads such as the ancient Brahma Upanishad which opens by describing human body as the divine city of Brahman. Bodowitz states that this reflects the stage in ancient Indian thought where the self or the person as a totality became central, with the self or soul as the manifestation of the highest principle or God. This evolution marked a shift in spiritual right from the external to the internal, from public performance through shrauta like rituals to performance in thought through introspection, from gods in nature to gods within. The shrauta agnihotra sacrifice thus evolved into prana agnihotra sacrifice concept. Heisterman describes the Prananihotra sacrifice as one where the practitioner performs the sacrifice with food and his own body as the temple, without any outside help or reciprocity, and this ritual allows the Hindu to stay in the society while maintaining his independence from it. Its simplicity thus marks the end station of Vedic ritualism. Topic. See also. equals equals notes